what is up guys and welcome back to another discord bot episode um so um in the previous episode we had a look at interactivity and some basic interactivity features which allow the users to interact with the bot in this episode we're going to be taking that a bit further and i want to show you what event handlers are in a discord bot so um like this might seem like a new term to you but it's a very useful feature in a discord bot that sort of automates a lot of things for you what do i mean by the term event handler so first of all what's an event right so an event in the context of a c-sharp discord bot an event is actually something that takes place within the bot so for example I can open up my Discord and um, I can just send a message like this, test. That is an example of an event. It's an event of a message being sent. There's many different event handlers for a Discord bot. And what the event handler bit means is we can actually program methods like this, my private static task. And this has been applied to my client ready event. So what this means is I can actually program methods and assign them to the different Discord events that go on in Discord. So maybe I can program a method to do something when a user sends a message. Maybe I can program a method to do something when someone executes a slash command, when someone presses a button. Maybe I can also execute an event handler when a command reaches a certain limit, like a cooldown or specific roles being added. Event handlers are almost straight up better versions of using interactivity in a Discord bot. So it's very important that you learn how to do this. We'll be using event handlers a huge amount in the next few episodes. So let me show you a few examples of how event handlers work and it should give you an idea of what exactly they are. So there are two types of event handlers in a Discord bot. There's one for our client. Now, as you guys know, the, the, the Discord client is the main part of our bot. So there's going to be a lot more event handlers in the client. And there's also event handlers for commands because like if you haven't realized, there's actually command attributes. So these are some examples of some command attributes that can be used in like discord commands most people when they make a discord bot tutorial they'll usually show you these kind of things first and honestly that's not the way to do it because these things need event handlers it's to be able to use them properly um like need certain roles need certain permissions right think of these as certain command restrictions these different command attributes only work through the event handler and i'll show you how to do them so there's two types our client has the main event handlers and our commands have event handlers purely for those restrictions and those different command attributes that you can set on your various different commands so let me go through like the most common ones in the client first We've actually set up an event handler already, and that's this client.ready event. And um, like if we read the description of this event, it's fired when this client has successfully completed its handshake with the WebSocket gateway. Basically, it's just saying once everything is connected and come online, it will literally fire this event, meaning the bot is ready to do something. So, and that's the keyword, firing this event. So when an event fires, that means it's going to activate. And this is automatically done. So we don't have to actually manually trigger this event. It actually activates automatically. So let me show you some of these events. So let me type in client. And then if we sort by event, so let me press dot to, 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 to you know, like view, to, to, to view anything. And let's sort by this lightning symbol. So this lightning symbol means events. So let me click on that. And there's so many events in like in this client, look at how many events there are. It's actually crazy. So like here are the most common ones. There's literally like an event for everything. When a channel is created, when a channel is deleted, when a Discord component interaction has been created. So when we get around to coding Discord buttons, we'll be using this event handler. There's, you know, stuff for guild created when a user creates a server. Um, let me see, there's, you know, there's, you know, like guild role created. So when someone creates a role in a server, it will fire this event. That's pretty cool, right? This event fires when a message is created. So when someone sends a message, this, this message created event is going to fire. When someone erases a message, it's going to fire this, you know, it's, it's going to fire this event. When someone adds a reaction onto a message, there's an event for that as well. So so for example, let's do one where someone sends a message. So let's go to message created. Cool. And then we say plus equal, and then we can assign a method to subscribe to this event. So like that's the key terminology for this. 
when we say plus equals, it means we can assign a method to subscribe to this event. So that means when this event will fire and activate, it will trigger like all the code that is in this method. What this IDE can like do specially for us is it can auto generate it for us. So like as you can see, press tab to insert. So let me press tab. And there we go. It literally automatically creates a method for us so that we don't have to write it ourselves. And like, I can just rename this to, you know, like message created handler. And it will rename it down there too. So that's pretty cool, right? So it's automatically created a method for us and it's assigned to this event handler over here. Meaning that when I send a message, it will activate this event handler and it will execute all of this code that I write in here. So let's just write some simple code. So let me just change this to E. There is the message created event args and then, and then we've called that E. So this message create event args, think of this as the command context of the event handler. So it's, it's basically short for event arguments. So when we say E and then dot, it's pretty similar to the command context. Look, look E dot channel, E dot author, E dot guild, E dot mention roles. So, you know, it's, it's, it's pretty similar, right? So let's send a message back to the server where this message was sent. So, you know, like this should give you an idea. So let's say await, and then let's say E dot channel, and then let's say send message async pretty similar to what we saw, right? And then we can say this event handler was triggered. So for every message we sent, it's going to send this message back. So let me start up the bot and show you what that looks like. So let's start it up. Cool, so let's just send the message. I'm just gonna say test. And then as you can see, yeah, it's this. But <laughs> every time a message is being sent, this event handler like, will trigger. Once again, for every single message that is being sent, it's going to trigger this method, which is subscribed to this event. So every time it fires, it's going to read the code in this method and and basically execute it. So, so you know, like as you can see, this event handler was triggered. Pretty cool, right? So, you know, like this can be used for a lot of things. Like, for example, maybe like a swear filter. So when someone sends a message, I can program this method to check that message for any swear words. And then I can do something based on if there is a swear word in that message. So here's one that's interesting. So voice stay updated. So let's read the, what it says. So this event fires when someone joins, leaves or moves voice channels. So this event handler is pretty useful for voice channels. So let's make one based on that. So let's just program this to just send a message if someone joins a voice channel. Pretty simple, right? So once again, let's do plus equal and then let's press tab to make a new event for that. And as you can see, it makes the event for us. So let's say voice channel handler. Okay, and then let's change this to an E. So when someone joins a voice channel, let's say this user joined a voice channel. Let's see what's in this E variable now, this voice state update event args. So what can we do here? So there's the E channel, there's the E after, so so you know, like what's this? Gets the voice state post update, okay. And then E dot before is, the, is gets the voice state pre update. So, okay, so like let's say if, and then the E dot before state is equal to null because it's pre update, right? So that means this user is going to join the voice channel from no other voice channel. So let's check that. And then let's also check if the E dot channel and then the name is equal to create. So let's just say await CTX. No, no, not CTX. Let's say E dot channel. Yeah, so like this is a mistake that a lot of people can make. So make sure you're using this variable up here. And then let's do send message async. And then let's say in a nice concatenated string, let's get the user who did this. So let's see what we can do. So e.user, perfect. So let's get e.user and then username. And then um, like I can say they joined the voice channel. Cool. Okay, so let's just test this out. Okay, so let's join this voice channel and then let's, oh, and then let's also see what the text channel is saying. So let me join. Okay, so it's, it's done that so let so let me press continue 
and let me see if it's sent the message yeah yeah so you know like there we go it says i have joined the voice channel this features some very cool automation features that we'll be using later on in the series but this is how event handlers work so be sure to pause the video and experiment this for yourself because there's a lot of things that you can do in event handlers that could be useful now let's get through to the command side of things so there's specific event handlers that are tied to like the different restrictions that you can give commands. One of those popular types of restrictions is a cooldown. So, you know, like if you've ever used a Discord bot before, there's, you know, like most commands might have cooldowns on them. So maybe like after 10 uses of one command, um, like there's a cooldown set on it for like 10 hours. So I'm gonna show you how to use event handlers to implement a cooldown or any other restriction that you want on a command. But like let's, like let's apply a cooldown to this command and what we can do is is use command attributes to give this command a cooldown as you can see there we go so like d -shot plus commands next and then attributes is um you know like this is what a cooldown is so like what this attribute does is it defines a cooldown for this command this allows you to like to define how many times users can execute a, a, a specific command okay so let's see what this wants so let's go through this attribute so it's max uses so i'm assuming that's going to be the maximum amount of uses someone can use this command before the cooldown triggers like five times ten times so let me just put five screw it so let's say that and then double reset after so reset after is probably the time yeah it's it's it's, it's probably the you know it's probably the time in seconds so let me just say 10 so after 10 seconds and then the cooldown bucket type, let's see. So cooldown bucket type global. So that means in like, so, so you know, like global means like across the whole bot. So no matter what server it's in, it's going to apply for all servers, all channels everywhere. Um, like there's one for user. So this is per user. So like this is a cooldown for each user. Okay. And then this is a cooldown per channel. Okay. So no matter how many users there are, it's going to be the same cooldown, but it's per channel. And then guild is going to be no matter how many channels there are, and then no like and then no matter how many users there are, it's going to apply across the whole server. Okay. So we've made the simple cooldown. Okay. Let's test this command out and see what happens. So that's one, two, three, four, five. And then nothing happens after that. Yeah. Like, like, yeah. So like, and then once, yeah, in that short period where our cooldown was active, the user doesn't know that this cooldown is active. So like, we need to use our bots event handlers and like, and push notify the user when this cooldown is activated, when the cooldown actually fires, because this cooldown activated is actually an event, right? So let's use our event handlers to send a message saying how much time is left on our cooldown. So let's do that. When this cooldown activates, it means that the five tries has been elapsed. 10 seconds hasn't you know, reset yet. So these checks have failed and that's gonna make an error in our event handler. So it is our job to catch the error and then send a message notifying our user that there is a cooldown and then how many seconds there are left. So let's use our commands next extension and let's use the built-in event handlers that that has. So let's see what we've got here. So commands. And let's once again sort by event. So there's two events. We need the one for command error. Because once again, if you think about it, call down attribute basically throws an error when any of those checks have been failed, right? So let's say you know, command error. And then let's make a method. So once again, plus equals. And then let's make an event handler for it. So... There we go. So let's say command event handler. So when we catch that cooldown activating, then we can send a message notifying our user of our cooldown and how many seconds there are left. So let's do an if statement first. So let's try and catch this exception. So let's say if the e dot exception, as you can see here, so an exception means an error, exception, and we're trying to check if it is a checks failed exception. So these, you know, you know, like these cooldown checks have failed. So that means, you know, like there is an error going on. 
So let's say if it is a checks failed exception. So checks failed exception. And um, like, as you can see, like this is exactly what we're looking for. Indicates that one or more checks for, for, checks for a given command have failed. And that's talking about this very attribute over here. So these checks that we've got over here. Cool. And let's give this checks for an exception a name. So let me just say um, um, like our exception. So let's give that a name. Cool. So if our e dot exception is a checks field exception, then let's try and get the call down from this. So let's do a for each loop. So let's say for each, and then let's say var check in in our checks field exception. So let's say exception, and then let's go through its failed checks. So let's for each through this, and let's get our call down. So let's try and convert each of these checks into a call down attribute because that's what this is. This is a call down attribute, like as you can see there. So call down attribute. So let's say var call down is our check. And let's cast this as call down attribute in an attempt to approach convert it from a failed check into a call down attribute. So, 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 you know, like let's do this. So in brackets, let's say call down attribute so now what we're doing is casting our check as a call down attribute and this should contain our details about the call down that failed right so this call down should now contain correct information about the call down that just failed right so now let's make an embed that approach says this is a call down going on and then how many seconds are left so let's first of all get the you know you know like let's first of all get how many seconds are left on this call down so let's say var time left on this call down and let's say call down get the remaining call down so cool that's going to get the call down for us and then let's see what this needs so this needs a command context and luckily our command error event args has this command context so let's say e dot context so this will give us the so like this will give us the command context of the command where like where this fail happened let's convert it into a you know like proper time format like hours hours minutes minutes and seconds seconds so let's say two string and then let's put it into a nice you know like time format this string format will literally get our time and then it will literally convert it into hours minutes and seconds so that we can display it in our message, right? But I've just realized we can't do this in the for each loop. So let me actually make the, you know, you know so, you know, like, let me actually make the, you know, like time left variable up here. So let's say string time left. And let me set that equal here. Yeah, so like that should work properly. Now we can actually access our time left in our message. So let's say var call down message is equal to a new discord embed builder and then let's make it look cool so let's say the you know like color is discord color and then red because you know like it because you know like red makes sense because it's an error that's a cool down you know like going on and then let's set the like, and then let's set the you know like title to so let's say please wait for the cool down to end and then in the description, let's say how many seconds there are left. So let me put a comma here and then description. And then let's put our time left. So let's say, there we go. Um, so, you know, like why is this? Maybe I'll just convert this into string.empty. Yeah, so let's set this to string.empty first. And after this for each loop, it will literally get the call down time. And then we can put it in here. Cool, cool, cool. So that should all work. And then we can use our e.context to send our message off. And that's quite convenient. So what we can do is say await e.context and then like the channel and then send message async. Pretty simple, right? And then we can say embed as our call down message. So this code will literally execute when our call down is activated and each of these checks are failed. So if so like if five tries have been elapsed or like 10 seconds hasn't passed yet then it will literally trigger a you know like trigger a failed exception which this event handler will now catch let's test this out 
So let us just spam this. So spam, and there we go. I'm still spamming it, and yeah. Please wait for, please wait for this cooldown to end, and the time shows there. So, yeah, man, it's pretty useful. Pause this video maybe and stop practicing with these, you know, like event handlers and messing around with, with like you know, and messing around with the things that you can do. Obviously, like if you get any errors, it's fine. It's all part of the experimentation. But this is how event handlers work, man. It's so useful. It's, it's yeah, it's it's so useful. I can program this event handler to see if there is invalid roles, if those checks are failed, and pretty much I can you know like say a message saying you need these specific roles to be able to execute this command, and pretty much I can mess around with all the different command you know the attributes I can put on. So there's a lot of stuff to mess with here. Uh, but that's that for this video. This is all, you know, like this has been all about event handlers and how to implement them in your Discord bot. They are way better than interactivity, but you know, like not to say that interactivity is not useful. It still is. Like I think use of event handlers is much more easier in in most cases. So um, now once again, um, like if you have any questions, then make sure to leave a comment below. Obviously, join my Discord server if you have any errors or just you know like dying questions. If you have any like big errors and you need our help. Um, like we are here to help you in our Discord server. So like that's it for now. Make sure to like and sub to my channel and I'll see you lot in the next one. Peace out.